I've changed the plumbing on these three little grow beds and I'll be hooking them up to the aquaponics today to grow some aquaponic ginger. Stick around if you want to see how it's all going to be set up. G'day folks, it's Rob here. Thought I'd just give you a bit of a quick look at the external siphon again and some altered plumbing before we get into how I'm setting this up for my uh, ginger beds. I went down to uh, the old hardware store after I dusted off the old credit card and bought another 90 degree corner uh, or elbow I should say and a couple of tea pieces because I had a couple of people point out that my plumbing was a little bit too elaborate in the last clip I posted on just hooking up two of these barrels so um, yeah basically I was using what I had on hand um, I plumbed this all up yesterday and it worked a treat um, this external siphon still worked really well no hassles with it whatsoever um, the water came in the siphon initiated the water went out so not a problem with the little external siphon and I do think it is a great way to hook up a couple of beds um, if you want to have a remote siphon that isn't taking up room in the beds itself so uh, what I did was basically use some clay um, the clay that actually came out of those yellow barrels originally I popped that back in the um, two yellow ones the two end ones and I left this one here vacant just to see how low the water would go with clay in there because I did figure that clay would add a little bit of a resistance to the flow of water when it came time to pull the clay out I discovered that a lot of the clay had stuck in these little holes here uh, pretty much were one ball to every hole so that would have retarded the flow of the water out through the drain system and then into the siphon so what I've done with um, the three that are in here that one and that one up there and this one here is I've cut some extra slits in now these slits will sit at the base of the uni seal and there's no way that a ball is going to block these guys up so just to show you guys I wouldn't worry about drilling the holes I'll just use a drop saw if you can um, if you've got one available to you because yeah the clay will tend to um, block these little holes the only other thing you could probably do to get away with it is maybe putting some rough rock around there a uh, regular shaped rock if you are using clay and that'll stop it from pressing up tight against those holes which I'll show you with my bell siphon in a little while anyway um, so yeah I've got these three beds ready to go um, I've got a spare little drainage pipe there I'm not sure what I'm going to use that on yet but for the time being it's only going to be these three barrels that are hooked up to our aquaponic system for you folks who haven't seen the first clip I'll just set the camera up and I'll give you a bit of a quick look at how these barrels have been plumbed up so just quickly with these drains they're a pretty basic design all I've got is a length of pipe I won't give you exact measurements because everyone's beds will be slightly different but it's cut to length so I've got enough to work with underneath the grow bed itself for the plumbing fittings and it's coming up pretty much all about um, two-thirds the depth of the bed here some people have raised concerns that these may clog up with roots over time that's why I've done pretty much all uh, such a large length of holes in here I'm only growing ginger in here so their roots don't tend to be very invasive and when I use it after the ginger is harvested I'll probably put things in like lettuce or silver beet something that will you know pretty much will grow and then harvest the whole plant at some point in time so I don't think I'll have a problem with these clogging up and next season we'll throw the ginger in here again if it goes all right so with the plumbing side of things I've cut out a hole in the base of the barrel here I've gone around with a deburring tool and just snipped off any of the little burrs the reason being is they can actually um, impede the seal of the uni seal on the join there and you might end up with a little bit of a drip or two the uni seal is just a two inch or 50 mil pressure pipe um, this is pressure pipe by the way uni seal there is a difference between this and drain pipe in the uni seal sizes that you need that's just been pushed down in there and on the base of this pipe here I've made a bit of a chamfer and that just helps you start off the pipe in the uni seal, seal itself it helps you just to wet the base of the pipe that's going through and then it's just a matter of wiggling it from side to side and round and round and then all I'm doing is basically pushing it down until that bottom line is just about a millimeter above the top of the rubber seal obviously if you push it too far you may end up with a bit of a leak down the bottom so that's pretty much all it for plumbing up this side of the bed so with these barrels I'm actually going to flip them over now and I'm going to work out the drain pipes in situ up here and before I take them down and set it up at the aquaponics these upturned barrels are laid out in the fashion that they'll be plumbed into the system. We'll have water flowing into this one, 
down through the drain pipe here, uh, eventually making it through to the other beds. And in this far one, we're going to have a bell siphon popped in right here. And from there, the water will go out into the sump tank. Now, the reason I've popped the bell siphon in the bed is because I'm limited to the amount of space I can actually use in that section of the aquaponics system. Uh, having the extra little external siphon there could cause a few hassles. Now, when it comes to measuring these things out, one of the things you have to take into consideration is how much pipe goes into these fittings. Now, with these elbows, I know that roughly 40 mil of pipe, or what's that, uh, just under an inch and a half, or around about an inch and a half worth of pipe will go into here. But with this T-piece in the center, we're only getting roughly around about 35 mil, or just over an inch and a quarter worth of pipe into here. So those dimensions there need to be added on to the actual gap between these two. The pipework itself is pretty easy to glue together. I like to prime all surfaces that will have the glue on it. That's on both the pipe and the fittings themselves. Uh, I'd put on a very generous amount of the glue, as you can probably see from all the drips once it's all completed. Uh, that's basically to make sure I've got a nice watertight seal at all points. In the top of the fittings, I've added in a few small sections of pipe, uh, the purpose of which will become apparent once we take the pipe work down to the aquaponics tomorrow. I'll be letting the glue cure overnight just so we end up with a nice tight seal on the fittings. So we're just down here at the back of the aquaponics and this is where these three little barrel beds are being set up to grow a few different types of ginger. The stand's all leveled off using some concrete blocks and pavers, and I've got the inline all ready to go. I've got some sleeper offcuts just to add a little bit of extra length to the bench so we can fit all um, barrels on nice and neatly. And I also have the clay all ready to go down in here too. The glue on the pipework should be nice and cured as well and ready to go. And this is a look at the cuff that I'll be using to attach the drain work to the grow beds themselves. I'll give you a look at a few other options you might want to consider afterwards as well. And just up in the end bed there, we're ready to plumb in that little shroud and the rest of the bell siphon. So I might set up the camera and we'll do the bell siphon first and then we'll come back and have a look at the drain work. I'll just run through how I'm installing the bell siphon, but if you want to see how I make them, you can check out that little card up there. Um, you can come back and click on that after you've watched the clip. So we've basically got a shroud and on the base of the shroud, I've got an end cap that I've adapted so the shroud will sit in there and you can put the bulkhead fitting through. Just keeps it nice and firmly in place in case anyone sort of lifts it and you end up with clay up the, in there and it fouls up the works. Uh, through that hole in the base, I'll be running this little bulkhead fitting or tank adapter. Um, it's a pretty basic little jobby. This is one I've used a fair few times. In this, on the top side of the grow bed, we'll be screwing in this little standpipe arrangement. And over the top of that will be the bell. And all this here sits inside the shroud. And then underneath the bed, um, I've got this little adapter made up. It's a threaded fitting, screws onto the base like that, and this elbow will direct the water out into the sump tank below. So installing these guys is pretty easy. Um, the washer goes on first, then I pop on the little um, cap here. I've got some marks on here so I can line it up to the um, shroud later. The bulkhead fitting goes through, and then on the other side we put on the locking nut and another washer. So I might just change the view so you can see how I'm going to work out the plumbing underneath as well. So the washer first and then the lock nut. I just go hand tight with the lock nut for now and I come back later and tighten it with some tools. Next on this side here what I'm going to do is just run some Teflon tape. So this will just give us a nice watertight seal between the thread and the little adapter that will be screwed on here. You'll probably also notice I like to go over the top of the Teflon tape. Better to have too much than not enough and have to come back later. So hopefully that'll be enough. Now my little threaded fitting goes on. And sometimes you'll find as this starts to bite into the thread, you can probably see there, it actually undoes the bulkhead fitting. So that's why I like to screw this on now before I fill up the bed with clay. Because I tell you what, this, come, this bulkhead coming undone after the bed's full of clay or rock can be a real pain in the butt to fix. So that's on there pretty tight now. Just got my pliers here and we'll just do this up nice and tight. So that's nice and tight now. And this can go in situ. And we'll just put the rest of it together. Um, this pipe work, I just pop that in there by hand. A little adapter on the top just gets slipped on. Uh, this is just a, an adapter from a one inch down to a three quarter or 25 to 20 mil. Just allows a lot more water to cascade over and form a water lock to initiate the siphon. Uh, basically something Afton came up with, I think. So 
that little adapter just gets screwed in there doesn't have to be watertight at this point doesn't matter if a little bit of water goes down bell over the top and I'll just find my little marks here on the shroud that goes on there and we're in business so now I'm just going to set up the fitting that will run the water from this pipe into the sump tank so what I like to do around these fittings is just run a little bit of the um, same Teflon tape as we used around the threaded bulkhead fitting and what this will do is it'll just help create a nice watertight seal even though there's not always water running in this pipe or sitting in it I do like to have it um, watertight just a couple of rounds with that and then what I do is um, just push on the little elbow like so so once the fittings are together I run a small drill through and then I just zap through a 316 stainless steel screw. The 316 stainless steel is good because it won't corrode in the slightly acidic environment of an aquaponic system. So now the drain fitting and the bell siphon inside the bed are sorted out, we can get ourselves ready to install the drain. So when it came to trying to work out how to connect this drain work to the base of the grow beds I had a few ideas in mind. The first one was to wrap some Teflon tape around the pipe that comes from the base of the grow bed, similar to what I did with the drain before on the base of the bell siphon. Pop it into these fittings and then zap through a 316 stainless steel screw. I thought with the amount of water that's in here and the weight that's on there, probably not a great idea. My second thought was to use one of these guys. This is called a barrel union basically a two-part um, connecting system you can get it in various sizes it's got an o-ring in there glue one half to here one half under the bed and then this tightens them up um, so it becomes a watertight seal these guys here are around about $14 each is the cheapest I've been able to find them this is one that I've got spare laying around so not something I wanted to go out for this build and go and grab what I came up with was the idea of using some sort of pipe or cuff to zap over here and then screw it in place. It gives me a bit of um, flexibility because the pipes coming through the bed may be slightly on weird angles because I'm using uni seals plus the bases of the barrels aren't uh, perfectly flat. So I thought using a cuff like this would be a great way to go. Now originally I wanted to get some food grade vinyl, um, two and a half inch food grade vinyl pipe and use it or hose but it's very hard to come by. I've actually got some on order so when that comes in I'll be replacing these drain cuffs with the good food grade stuff. What I'll do is I'll set up the camera and we'll have a go at manhandling these guys into the cuffs that are already on the beds. First thing I'm going to do is just slacken off these hose clamps and push them up the cuffs just to get them out of the way for the time being. So next is the fun bit, trying to get these guys in. Start with this one down here first, I think. There we go. And I'm just going to put a little bit of tension on the hose clamp just to hold it in place while I do the rest. Now the next one. And the last one. So there we go. Not hard at all, really. So now all we need to do is tighten up these hose clamps. And we can give the system a dry run, or sorry, a wet run with some water just to see if we've got any leaks anywhere. So this is the original line that fed into the yellow barrels while they were here. And just on the other side of that valve, I've got a nut and tail adaption just to take this extra length of hose that comes all the way out here and will feed in through the um, end of this bed here. So this bit of plumbing is pretty basic. I've got another valve here. So I've got the master one back further before the nut and tail. This one here will help regulate the flow in and out of the bed for uh, adjusting the bell siphon. And then I've just got it coming up to a bit of hose work and some um, fittings here, a threaded elbow, and just another elbow that sits over the top. Zap through a little bit of a hole here that I can use a zip tie on. And this will stop anything knocking it out of the bed and draining the system dry. So pretty basic little setup. Something I like to do before I put the clay into any bed 
is to have a wet run just to make sure all my plumbing's nice and watertight. So that looks like more than enough. So I'll just give it about oh, 10, 15 minutes and I'll come back and see if there's any leaks down there. So it's been about 15 minutes and I've checked all the pipe work and all the fittings and there doesn't appear to be any leaks anywhere or drips or anything. So I'm pretty chuffed about that. So now we'll start to fill up the grow beds with some clay. So I'll start off with the bell siphon first. I'm going to put some irregular shaped rock around those holes at the base of the um, siphon guard and that'll hopefully stop any of the clay from clogging up those holes there. This has all been pH tested too by the way so I know it won't upset the pH of the system at all. Now the clay going in here isn't perfectly clean. There is a little bit of um, muck left on it so the water will probably get a little bit cloudy. There we go, that looks like about it for this bed. Now on to the other two. Just quickly, a question I get asked and see pop up online a fair bit is why is my clay floating? The reason the clay floats for the first couple of days in some cases is it's very dry and there are a lot of pores in there, a lot of hot small holes that have air. So basically what you're waiting for the clay to do is absorb enough water, expel all the air, and then it'll start to sink down. Um, it's not something that I've ever had any major hassles with. As long as you have probably around about uh, an inch to an inch and a half, what's that, 20, 25 to 30 something millimetres of dry clay on top of where your water's rising up to. It shouldn't be a huge problem. That should be enough weight on there to keep it nice and submerged until it soaks up enough water. So hope that helps some folks out there who have that problem. That looks pretty good to me. So now we're pretty much all ready to turn it on. The one last thing that I like to do is just have a little bit of a cuff here, just a little bit of pipe. And what that does is it allows me to um, see the flow coming into the bed so I can help uh, adjust it to fine tune the siphon. Not only that is it gives me somewhere where I can pop in a dollop worth of the seaweed powder or the um, chelated iron if I need to dose the system with that. So. Without any further ado, we'll turn this tap and she's online. So I actually gave the system a bit of a flush um, just to get rid of any of the fine solids out of here. Basically just brought in the garden hose, popped it in here, turned it on full and I had a pipe coming out of the sump tank. Um, once that did one cycle, got a lot of those fine solids out, we're right to go. Once this is ready and the water is um, full of the bell siphon, I'll give you a look at the uh, quality of the water coming through. So you might be able to make out the bulkhead fitting down the bottom of the shroud there. So the water has cleared up a lot. It was a lot murkier before. We'll just pop this bell on because that's going to go over any second now. And I'd say that's pretty much all it. We'll just pop around the side of the bed and see if the siphon initiates and then breaks cleanly. So those little drips there, I'd say they're from where the stand pipe is screwed into the bulkhead fitting because I haven't used any tape there at all. And here we go. Let's see how long this takes to initiate. And there she blows. So definitely initiated all right. So we'll just have to wait and see how well she breaks. So I'd say she's, yeah, I'm starting to hear a bit of a gurgle up the top there. And there we go. I just put my microphone right over the top of the bell, so 
Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, on and off, without a hitch, these little bell siphons, they really do work a treat. Um, if you want to check out the clip, remember you can click on that little eye icon in the top right hand corner of the screen and that'll take you to a link to see how I actually put these little jobbies together. Now I'm pretty stoked with the way that this little build has gone together. Having the bell siphon in this end bed has meant that basically I can have another grow bed, which means more ginger can be planted here. So that's something I'm looking forward to. A great use of space, I think. The other system though, if you do have the room and you know, having a little external control box bell siphon is a great idea. And that way you can, you know, tack on as many beds as you want and you can basically plumb through extra lines into the control box whenever needed. So I won't be planning out the ginger this afternoon because time's gotten away from me and I think we have another storm coming in and I want to change out the veggie net over this area of the hoop house for some 30% shade cloth. Basically these two barrels are going to get caned come midday every day so a 30% shade cloth should offer them a little bit more protection. Uh, as for what gingers I'm planning out, these two barrels are having normal ginger, uh, two pieces in each and that end bed closest to the camera is having some of our Chinese Keys, which I think is also known as Lesser Galangal, and also Kanker Ginger from elsewhere in the patch transplanted in. So just be interesting to see how they go in the system. Um, I will be posting a clip on that too, by the way. So uh, if you haven't subscribed already and would be interested in seeing how they go in, you can click on that little subscribe button down there and you'll be sent a notification email once this clip gets uploaded or any other clips on our aquaponics or backyard farm that we like to post to YouTube. And you can come along and say good day in the comments section below. I do hope that this clip though has given you a few ideas if you're looking at ways to join beds together and run them with a single siphon. And I also do hope that your aquaponic system is booming like the rest of your patch. And I will see you next clip. Cheers folks, have a great one.